Hello Year 10 and welcome to the next of the video series in genetics and biotechnology. This one is going to focus on mitosis and meiosis. We've looked so far at the structure of DNA, its relationship to genes and chromosomes and how it actually starts to code for uh, different characteristics. Now one of the very important processes that we need to look at is the process of DNA replication. That is, when the DNA copies itself. And this is one of the things that makes it a particularly uh, useful and interesting molecule. DNA replication occurs during two important processes. They are the processes of cell division. And in junior years, we would have looked at two processes of cell division, one of which is mitosis and the other of which is meiosis. And we'll have a look at meiosis uh, in a couple of later slides. So to review, firstly, mitosis is the process of replicating exact copies of somatic or body cells. The process of, meiosis, of mitosis is useful for two important functions, growth and repair. Mitosis is a very active process when we become a fertilized egg or zygote. And as our cell number increases, as we increase in size, of course, once we reach adult stage, we don't tend to do a lot more growing, but what we do is repair cells that get damaged. Mitosis plays an important role in both growth and repair in multicellular organisms. Mitosis itself is also a form of asexual reproduction or binary fission splitting into two in unicellular organisms. The important thing about mitosis is one cell splits into two cells. And the two cells are identical. These are called, the first one is called the parent, and these are called the daughter cells. And the daughter cells are identical to the parent. That is, they have the same number of chromosomes. Every cell in your body is produced as a consequence of mitosis. Here we see a representation of the stages of mitosis. Now there are names that are associated with each stage in mitosis, but it's not important at this stage for you to learn all of those names. Of course, if you're interested, you can have a look at them. Mitosis is part of the normal cell cycle. Cells grow and when they reach a certain size, they start the process of division. The first important step is the replication of the DNA. We're gonna look at how the DNA does this in a later video, but this is a very important process because what we need is two full sets of DNA. Once this happens, there's two full copies. They are now, these are now chromosomes um, that have become joined so that we have uh, double sets. They line up along the equator of the cell, the center of the cell, and start to move away towards the poles. You can see that this separation has started to occur with one part of each pair moving off in different directions. Once the chromosomes are located in the two different polar regions of the cell, then the cell starts to divide, split in half through a process known as cytokinesis, and we get left with our two daughter cells. Some terminology that might be useful here when chromosomes have a two uh, or paired structure, we call them diploid. We refer to this as 2n, where n is the um, base number of chromosomes. So this number would be equal to 46 in humans, that is 23 pairs. So all of our cells, with the exception of the ones that don't have uh, a nucleus, the red blood cells, or our gametes, our sex cells, sperm and eggs, all are diploid cells. The exception in this process, um, the exception that I just mentioned in the previous process are the gametes or the sex cells, and they are produced by a different process of cell division. This process of cell division is called meiosis. Meiosis is a double cell division. So one cell splits into two cells, but then each of these two splits into another two. So we end up with four daughter cells for every one parent cell. The other process that occurs as a result of this double division is that we have a halving in the chromosome number. D 
diploid cells become haploid cells. Two ends become ends. So in humans, this would be equivalent to 46 chromosomes in each of our cells, splitting into the 23 chromosomes that we have in each of our sperm or eggs. The process of meiosis occurs in the gonads um, or the testes and ovaries uh, within humans. Another schematic that kind of shows the same process. This is complicated by another process that you can see called crossing over. Crossing over occurs where parts of the chromosomes actually exchange material. This is a source of variation that we won't go into today, but this diagram kind of shows a nice simplified overview. Again, like mitosis, meiosis has a number of stages and there's names associated with each of the stages, but we want to just get a general overview at this point of how the process works. So again, you can see we start with four chromosomes in the original, a 2N number, so a diploid cell. These numbers double, so the first thing that we have to do again is DNA replication. The DNA is copied. And then we have our two daughter cells, but then these two daughter cells further divide by a second uh, division process to produce our four, chromosome, uh, four daughter cells at the end with only two chromosomes in each. So the chromosome number has been halved. So a question which I will um, give you and go through with you in class. Can you compare and contrast meiosis and mitosis? Good luck.